Hello, everyone, and welcome to our new LinkedIn series in the pipeline. I'm Brian Ditton, CEO of Regora, where we provide software to streamline and automate the appraisal process. Uh, this series focused on highlighting thought leadership all across the mortgage and tech space. Today, we have on industry powerhouse who brings <laughs> 18 years of experience at LMA, where he was president for nearly a decade. Jonathan Core, thank you for joining us. Brian, it's great to be here. Good to see you. You've been thanks for the uh, thanks for the very kind introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been you've been out of the industry for a little while, um, focusing on you know some more artistic areas. How's it been going with uh, you know Omniscient Owl Productions and everything you're doing in the music and Broadway space? Yeah, it's uh, it's actually been a lot of fun. Um, Omniscient Owl Productions is our uh, our production group uh, doing investing and co-producing. Uh, Broadway musicals, um, and uh, now involved in eight different uh, projects. Um, so I jumped into it pretty, uh, pretty uh, feet first, and um, having a, a wonderful time. Our first big show on Broadway that's opening up uh, in previews in November is uh, a beautiful noise, the Neil Diamond story, which is going to be very exciting. But we have a bunch of different. Um, projects uh, going on in different stages, The Devil Wears Prada, The Notebook, Griswold's Broadway Vacation, um, and some small investments in a Funny Girl and a Pinky Boots off Broadway. <laughs> that is awesome. My uh, my girlfriend, I'm sure, will be hounding me to ask you for some Broadway tickets soon, so I'll have to <laughs> keep, keep that quiet. But, um, well, awesome. So I know, like you said, you've, you've been a little way over a while, but it's been hard to ignore everything that's been going on in the mortgage industry over the last year or so obviously you know insanely quick rise in interest rates a lot of turmoil out there in terms of you know drop in volume margin compression what is your you know current take on the market how should lenders be thinking about it you know what you've obviously been through a couple of these cycles so i'd love to get your perspective yeah yeah you know we're uh, we're definitely in one of those cycles you know and i i i would have thought it would come have come uh sooner um you know we we, we haven't really been in a, a cycle like this we had a little spurt of one um in uh late 18 into 19 if you remember that the 100 basis points uh going up and freezing out uh you know refis a little bit and frustrating people with uh you know we still were in bidding wars so even though you know rates were going up uh that that dynamic dynamic was a little different dynamic in that Folks still at low interest rates, but they were frustrated because there was no inventory. Um, you know, this one is obviously driven by uh, the, the changes in the Fed position and uh, and, and and driving um, you know rates up uh, to deal with inflation and uh, the the ten years seeing that we're seeing that across the board in terms of rates. I mean, they've what more than more than doubled in the last uh, year. Um, you know, now we're seeing things in six plus percent um you know it's it's one of those cycles that you know that, uh, if you're doing things on the refinance side there just isn't any real refinance out there other than if you've got some relationships and people come back to you the the amount out there is is pretty limited maybe half a million folks are, are in a position to to refi so not a lot for uh the industry to tap into um you know on the on the purchase side um you know things have to probably settle out a little bit um you know uh prices have uh stayed up you know housing hasn't come down that much yet i think it will um as uh sellers and buyers have you know are in a different position where sellers are going to have to give up some to, to to buyers in terms of uh maybe bringing prices down but you know the dynamic has changed now that you know with interest rates up you know you get less for your dollar um, I saw an interesting, a, a very interesting positioning of this. Um, I think on, uh, I don't know who put it on, it was on LinkedIn earlier this week, but they were just showing the difference, um, you know, uh, between a 3% and a 6 or 7%. And though it was significant, right? I think the difference might have been $400 or $500. Um, you know, they put it in perspective because they said, you know, really, you know, what are people spending money on discretionarily? on other things. And, you know, is that really uh, affecting that much the amount of their their income that they're uh, applying to a, um, to a home? 
And so that was a very interesting positioning that I think that, you know, smarter um, loan originators um, would, would embrace, which is really trying to help people see the, the entire picture. And if their need for, you know, finding a, a home as a first time home is, is really important to them, which, you know, you continue to see that as a very, you know, likely thing as you survey folks um, that you position it in the, in the broader things. Yes, you're going to be paying more, but in the realm of things, you know, this is an investment in your future. Um, so, uh, but, you know, I think it's, it is a, it's, it is a, a tough time right now. Um, we are in a, um, uh, you know, uh, the cycle and it's, it's really about rolling your sleeves up, uh, focusing on your relationships and partnerships with real estate agents and brokers um, and trying to get the most out of um, the people and the resources you have, which is goes back to one thing that I've always talked about for 18 years is, uh, you know, investing in technology to do things faster, better, better experience, really at a lower labor cost. Yeah, it's an interesting point in terms of, um, you know, the discretionary spending. I think that a lot of people like to point to, oh, well, like 6%, 7%. That was like the historical average. But to be fair, I've also seen charts where the median price to median income, you know, from 20 years ago is very different than it is now. And so, yeah, to your point, if people still want to afford that first home, they might have to, you know, start saving more dramatically. So um, it's it's an interesting dynamic there. Um, to your point around kind of what lenders should be doing in terms of maintaining those relationships, things like that. I think that's an outstanding question. We've seen, you know, lenders be doing a bunch of different stuff. Some are just trying to hold on. Some are, you know, doubling down on loan officer recruitment, things like that, tech initiatives. What do you think, you know, lenders should be focusing on? Is now a time to just like survive and, you know, hold down or should all those kind of pesky tech initiatives that were, were tossed aside in 2021 be focused on? Like, what do you think, you know, lenders should be prioritizing right now? You know, I, I think that, um, I mean, as, as we, you know, uh, as we go through the end of this year and into early next year, I think folks will get a really good perspective on, you know, what the new normal is going to be for a little bit. I mean, because I don't think we're going to see um, a reverse in rates anytime, probably till, you know, the earliest, maybe the end of 23, if that happens. Um, so it's, it's the new normal. So what do you have to do in terms of, you know, understanding your cost structure and running your business and, and being in a, in, a, in a place where, you know, you've got a certain um, volume out there that you can go after. Um, and so I think people are, are, are figuring that out. And I, I think that's it's typically what we see, at the, at, you know, when we get into the cycle and we start to hit, you know, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the first six, six or nine months of it, people kind of figure that out. Um, you know, the shock has worn off and they, you know, the ones that are, you know, have been committed to this business are going to figure out how to, you know, um, survive or, you know, even, even, you know, do well, but at a different scale than they've been enjoying for the last number of years. Um, you know, the, the whole idea of it, in, investing in, in technology, you know, it's, it, everybody's always like, well, you know, I, I don't have time because things are so busy or I don't want to spend because things are down. I actually think, you know, this is the best time to do it. You know, a, a lot of the, the spend on technology um, is not a big necessarily upfront cost in terms of dollars. It's time and thinking about things and change management and kind of vetting out so that, you know, it really works for you. And, you know, when you're, you're in this kind of position right now, this is the time to do it because eventually we know things are going to come back. We're going to have, you know, uh, you know, a, a, an uptick as prices settle out as we get through, you know, this, you know, this this mild recession that I think people are projecting as, you know, rate shift. You know, you're going to be in a, a position to, you know, grow again. And if you make the investment now. Right. You can scale with that without adding a bunch of people and getting the benefit of it as it comes forward. So, you know, this is the time as things are slower um, to 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 invest. And, uh, you know, I've seen it time and time again. It's the companies that have done that have had the fourth, you know, have had the foresight to say, OK, it's 
we've been through this cycle before we know how to do this are the ones that when, when things recover, end up separating themselves from their competition. The best best companies born in, in the bear markets, they, they like to say. Yes. So, yeah. um, awesome. Well, Jonathan, thank you for being our, our first official guest on the In the Pipeline series. The wise words, as always, thank you for stopping by and uh, looking forward to catching up again sometime soon. All right. Thanks, Brian.